So why are you in the theater business? Well, I'm in the theater business because it's been the family business for, for more than 70 years now. And, um, and it, it's super exciting. And, and I love creating uh, products, brands, experiences. And in movie theaters, there has been a lot of innovations in the, in the past decade. So it's been a great ride. And when did you get introduced to it? Well, um, I got introduced to it um, early on uh, by visiting theaters uh, constantly and then took over um, the company in Venezuela at the, er at the age of 30 years old. And uh, we turned that company completely around. Five years after, we didn't have one single old theater in the company. Everything was brand new. And so we built 200 screens, 24 locations, pretty much in five years. Uh, so it was, it was a lot of work, but it was exciting. We were completely transforming the theater landscape in our home country in Venezuela. So it was great times. Amazing. And it was full of energy and, you know, of innovating and, and, and creating new, new stuff and bringing new products to the marketplace. And um, it, was, it was really amazing. It was an amazing time. Were you able to work side by side with your dad at that time? Was he in the business? Or he was in the business, of course, and but he stepped back a bit and he stayed on the film distribution side of the business, who he was a, an authority, an expert, a, a very well regarded and respected member of the distribution community worldwide. And that was such a specific um, part of the business that I came more on the side of, uh, of movie theaters rather than on the content side of bringing content to Venezuela to play in all movie theaters in the country. So, um, yes, he was. He was there, but he stepped back a little bit because at that time we brought in um, private equity. And it was at that point the Chase Manhattan Bank prior to Chase becoming J.P. Morgan. And so that gave us a, a, a strong foundation on structure and organization. And there was a formal board meeting established. So the report and the relationship was less family and more formal. Got so it. my dad was there and my uncle was there. But really it was more of a formal um, board meeting um, reporting to board members uh, with a traditional formal approach of, uh, you know, reporting. Yeah. So did, did so did you in the you know in the very beginning where did how did you get excited about this business was your your dad you know did your dad take you side by side in this business or are you just stumbling in the theaters because it was a family business or how did you how did this passion develop you know was it was, was um, obviously you you knew it was your family business but did, how did you fall in love with it to the well, point it, to do this. Well, it was easy because going to the movies was always like a great um, entertainment, right? And just being part of it and and uh, belonging to it, it was it was easy. And then um, the opportunity was humongous uh, to turn this around. And just by the the mere idea of everything that was there to be done, uh, the platform that we had already, it was so exciting. And um, I just love to to build and create and 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 um, and um, you know do um, amazing things that everyone's going to feel uh, passionate about and and valuable, and so that was my main drive. And uh, just by 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 my own self drive to to do things the right way and and to surprise and 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 it's so much fun to create from an idea and make it happen, right? So from all the ideation of what you have on, on your mind and what you want to do, and then you see it actually um, there, it's, it's a very satisfying. What, and, and advice, so what, you know, what's been some advice that stuck with you? Is there anything that sticks out in your mind, you know, words in this business that have meant, you know, more to you than others and, or an ideology about how you, how you are as a per who you are as a person or anything that, that really governs you 
Well, you know what? It, what it's most important is the team. I have to say, and the talent that you can you can um, get around you, and and that it's compatible with your style and your and the and the way you are, right? So if you are hands on, you need to have um, a team that it understands your hands on. If you're not, but it, it comes back to people in the end, and talent, and passion, and alignment. And there's nothing more, really. If you have the right people and you know where you're going and there's alignment and and so the execution is there and it's fun and it's enjoyable and um and that's pretty much it i would say and then the other thing that i've learned it's you make the money on the buy right? <laughs> on every single business every single investment so you have to be very wise um you know the time you go in so you're in a good position and if you do the things right you're okay if you if you go in too high, then everything must align for you to do well. Because if things turn around, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be in a happy place. What 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 about like challenges? I mean, I can't imagine what you face and challenges is personally with a family in Venezuela, and then the stress to come here, um, starting a new business, and yet have to look being CEO and looking over another company in Venezuela still. I mean, how, how, how did you manage that challenge in these times? I mean, this, gosh, what a, what a crazy time um, for you to be building a new business and dealing with an old, an old a, a more mature business in a, in, a, in a country that is maybe going the wrong direction. Well, um, the work ethics in our family, it's very strong. So we're hardworking and we put a lot of hours. And then the other thing is we need to be flexible. And we do have a special training in, in South America, I would say, or third world countries, where you kind of have to wear 10 hats at the same time because the support level that you have on those countries, it's limited because there's not that many people that are specialized on, on every segment or aspect of the operations. So you have to become super strong at, at, at many things. And many of the things are also done in-house because you don't have like reliable companies that can provide a service at a competitive price. So it's kind of almost, it's, it's more efficient to do it in-house. So it is in our nature to be super flexible and to change. And in Latin America, you know, governments go up and down, inflation pops up, then it stops, then you have devaluations, then you have all these things. So a, any business owner operator, it's super flexible to adapt to the new conditions that are, that are uh, you know, that, that, that come from nowhere. So um, when, when, um, when managers from third world countries come into the first world countries, they are very agile and very strong because they have this, Mm -hmm. um, cadence on the way they make decisions yeah. because they're forced towards part of their training. Um, and then we have a strong team in Venezuela that's all, that also helps a lot. Um, but it's like, you know, we deal with things that nobody could even imagine um, that we have to in countries where, you know, like you said, in the wrong direction, just price control is show up, then exchange control shows up, then you have this, then you have that, then you don't have electricity, then you do, then you have special hours, then you don't, then, you know. And, and it is incredible how much you can do if, if, uh, if you have a challenge and you go for it, there's always options or ways around and things that can be done. And I would say, you know, this pandemic has, taught us you know you have to figure a way mm. and you know the challenge is here and then you know you 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 find a way you find a way uh, somehow and we're all doing things that we thought were not possible uh, or that we didn't even, even had the need to think uh, that something like this could be done so this pandemic i think it's a pretty good example of how everyone has kind of adapted to survive and some yeah. have not and the ones that have not uh will adapt to some other circumstance but there's no option but to adapt and, right and that's that's been our you know again coming from latin america it's it's another you're it's a constant adapt state adaptation yeah. um because of political reasons right 
so what, what, how do you balance? Like, what, what do you, I mean, the work could be so daunting for you. I can't imagine dealing with all these issues. Do you have a counterbalance? I mean, what, what, what do you, what do you look for? Do you seek another balance besides work? I mean, does it, you know, what would you have an out? So for, for us, family, it's everything. So that's my, my out. And then I'm a super strong athlete always. <laughs> and I run, I run every day. Yeah. And that I get off of my back. That stress. It helps. It's the run. My yep. yep. That's great. I mean, I, and I, you, you, as a family, you guys spend a lot of time. To, I mean, you have these, annual trips right you guys do as a family which i think is outstanding and yes well uh, yes so i'm third generation and so uh, and we are a total of 60 family members uh, in three branches and so uh, um we we work at it to keep the family together um and 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 maintain relationships and so we are quite organized. We have a family council. We have a family constitution that um, kind of sets the guidelines of who we are and how we are and what things are important for us in terms of values and what, what things are um, we should um, stay away. And then we do annual family meetings, which is like a four-day reunion um, well, everyone goes and, and we have like the best of times. And it's, it's something that especially there, I, I would, let me put it this way. So I'm a third generation, we're 12 cousins. So at our level, we're super consolidated. The challenge was how to bring the fourth generation to enjoy this family um, feeling of belonging to this legacy right. uh, of, of uh, four generations. And so these meetings um, were critical. We started working this maybe 15 years ago. And these days, you know, the family, the family reunion, it's like the highlight, one of the main highlights of the, of the year because we're a bunch of people and we have a great time. We always choose a spe special location and it's full of activities and we're kind of competitors and we yeah. like extreme activities so we'll do all these things and it's so it's a lot of fun um and and that's when that's the way we've been able to accomplish this that's awesome that's awesome love it Matt, what is there you know in the next you know five years you know or so i mean do you do you see how do you i mean it's on everybody's mind i mean about the movie industry right now it's it's been hit hard and and I, I imagine in the middle of the pandemic you had to be scratching your head um you know what's the direction this industry is going into um i mean how do you feel like what's your gut telling you today what, what, you know just you being a leader in this field and in and just obviously delivering your 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 such a high bar of execution in this industry um you've consistently delivered does it how, do, how does it feel today to be be where you are in, in this in coming out of COVID. We're still in it kind of. Yeah. Well, uh, there's no doubt that there will be disruption effects after the pandemic and uh, it will affect us, of course. Uh, there, there, um, there is a disruption, in fact, in many, in many areas. We, we are very clear on who we are and what we are here to do. So we are here to offer an out of home entertainment experience. And going to the movies, it's a fantastic experience. It's a great option. And, um, and now that it has been combined with uh, a food and drink experience, it's the value proposition is very high. You go out, you're entertained, you're out for three to four hours. It's a very efficient time. The price points are, 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 um, are, are competitive. And we just need to do a great job uh, and be one more of the alternatives. Now, having said this, I do think that the size of the business, as we know it, might um, be reduced in some level that nobody knows yet. Because the option of streaming films uh, at home, it's also very convenient and, uh, and it's, a, it's a strong competition. 
Now, what it's clear is that um, the, the film business, it's a global business. So films are thought, produced, directed to be launched globally. And so there's not only thinking about the US, but the entire world. And there's so many different dynamics than the rest of the world. So mm -hmm. films will continue to be very strategic and valuable on a global basis. So the, so the fact that the films are being streamed uh, and released in streams simultaneously in the US does not apply to the rest of the world. So we believe that the window, the exclusively period, from when the film is released in theaters until they go into streaming will be around 45 days after the pandemic passes. Mm. Um, and um, there are several studios that have already confirmed that that's gonna be the case. Time will tell, but there is a lot of value on releasing the films in theaters and then moving on to the rest of, um, of, the, of the distribution uh, platforms. Not only that, films, the, 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 the blockbuster films that are made for the big screen, um, also, also um, are very important because once, once you hit one of them, you create a family of franchise sequels, which is like the long-term exploitation of a property. Right. So that's also very important to that. And when you have um, conglomerates or Disney, for example, every time they create a new story and they launch it as, as, as a global event, that becomes a property that then they feed off you know, consumer products and parks and, and in their uh, cruise ships and the hotels and the characters and everything. That makes sense. So yeah. envisioning a a landscape where everything it's kind of Netflix oriented top 10. Uh, I don't, I don't think that that's gonna, that's gonna happen Good. very soon. And again, we can say, listen, you yeah. have all, you, you can do everything at home and you can do everything out home, right? So you can cook at stay at home and you can, you cook out for it. Yeah, there's always options. There. Many things you're going to do at home, many things you're going to do outside. You're, we're humans and social uh, beings. We just need to stay relevant and we need to stay relevant delivering our great experience at a, at a competitive price. That makes sense. Let me ask you the last question in, in, you can, in 30 seconds. What is this fourth generation when they look back to talk about Gonzalo? What, are they, what do you think how they describe you as a leader? Ooh, I don't know. That's a good question. I can tell you that um, some of my family members call me Shrek meaning that I'm an ogre, but I'm a lovable ogre. <laughs> so I don't know if, if that's a, that's, that's like a five, close, huh? that, that's like a five second answer. Um, so I am tough um, and I demand. And um, I also take the time to um, accompany and support and explain and, and do a good job, but I can be tough at sometimes. And then I'm also very, a nice person. That's great. So it's it's awesome. Thanks, Gonzalo. I appreciate the time here. It's um it's, it's wonderful to be have this relationship with you, and obviously, it's been um, it's been a fun ride, you know, we've had. So I look we're so looking forward to the the years ahead of us. So thanks for your time here. Appreciate Same it. Same here. Thanks a lot, Matt. See you. Bye.